should you deadlift or squat first? That is the question. Egg before the chicken. It's a little bit loud in here. Let's go to the office and talk about this. I think at times we like to overcomplicate this question a little bit and think that it's really bigger than what it is. But if we break down our workouts and our goals into simplistic terms, it's pretty easy to understand. But let's sit down and talk about three ways to decide if you should squat or deadlift first in your program. So for a little bit of context, I think this question gets overcomplicated because we hear things like, oh, the deadlift is more demanding on our central nervous system than this squat and so forth, which actually might not be true based on some relevant research that looked at the two that found that they're pretty dang even when it comes to the overall central neural demand that they both in place on the body. But then we hear questions like, oh, you should always squat first because it goes squat, bench, deadlift in the meat, and that's just how it is. So who's to say who's right? Well, that's where we have to factor in our individuality and the context of our goals and so forth. So to help you out, I broke this video into three different chapters. So three different ways we can look at how to structure our squat and deadlift if we have them programmed in the same workout day. Let's dive into chapter one. Chapter one is most catered to recreational lifters. And this is kind of the simplified way to look at this question if it ever comes up or if you're programming for yourself and you have a squat and dead on the same day. So the first way you can structure this is to look at your workout program goals from an acute mindset. So more than likely you'll notice that one of those lifts is gonna have a slightly higher intensity. What would that indicate? That would indicate that we probably wanna put that movement first because it's gonna be a little bit more demanding physically and mentally. So let's say we have a squat and a dead, right? We have a three by five on our squat over here. And over here on the dead, we have like some more maintenance work of like a three by four at like 75, 80%. In this case, the squat should probably take hierarchy because it's gonna be more demanding. So instead of overcomplicating it and looking into the intricacies and all these other factors, look at your acute workout goal and factor in intensity and how that's gonna be demanding on your body. Why would you put a movement that's not gonna be physically and mentally demanding first and then do a higher intensity movement second when your goal is to put the most effort possible into this adaptation in the second movement. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense. So in chapter one, if you're thinking about structuring your squat and deadlift, just look at the intensity and the acute workout goal and then proceed from there. Then you can dive into the intricacies once you start noticing trends as you get better at acclimating to performing both of these movements in the same day and working with different intensities for them. In chapter two, we're gonna look at the specificity of the demands of a squat and deadlift in the same program. So this is for all the power lifters or soon to be power lifters out there. If you have a day where you have a squat and a deadlift programmed, or even if you have an SBD day, so a squat bench press deadlift day, likely you should put the squat first. And it doesn't necessarily nullify the intensity factor for chapter one. However, if we're looking at the principle of specificity and you're really trying to acclimate to performing the squat before the deadlift for meat purposes, then it would make more sense to put the squat first. Now, obviously, if you're working with a coach and they have it structured with the deadlift first because you have more effort being driven for that set, that's totally fine. However, it is one way to approach this question is by looking at the specificity of the movements and how they're going to apply to your sport. So in chapter three, we're gonna get a little bit into the weeds here, and that's by looking at the anthropometrics of our body and these movements. So the anthropometrics of our body are basically like our limb lengths and how our body is built. So more than likely, you are gonna have a preference towards the squat and deadlift. And more than likely, you're gonna have one of these movements that's much more physically demanding on you, and especially from a mental standpoint too. So which movement takes you more mental hype to get ready to perform and execute perfectly? So for me personally, my squat is much more difficult than my deadlift. I'm a long lanky dude, so hitting full depth in a squat takes a ton of effort, even when working at lighter intensities. So if I really wanna dive into the weeds here for my programming, I might put my squat over my deadlift, even if the deadlift does have a slight edge when it comes to intensity, just because mentally and physically, it's a lot more difficult for me to sink squats to depth, and especially for higher rep sets. So that's another way we can look at how to structure our squats and deadlifts in our program. So if you're not gonna factor in intensity and they're both pretty even with you with that case, then you could look at it 
from an anthropometric and like individuality standpoint when it comes to the effort it takes for you to perform each movement. If your deadlift is extremely tough for you, even with lighter intensities, then it might be worth putting forth. And it might be worth structuring in front of the squat, especially if you're learning this movement because you want your full attention, effort, and energy going to perfecting that movement, executing clean reps, and so forth. So without confusing you too much, these are a couple different ways you can look at this question. Now, there's really not a perfect way to always do this, and I would stress to look for trends in your workouts and notice what works best for you. Traditionally, if I'm prepping for a deadlift meet or a powerlifting meet, I will usually go with the second chapter, so I'll work with the specificity of my meet and how I'm training. Now, on a recreational day, so if I do have a squat and deadlift program in the same day and I'm trying to get a lot of work in because I can't go to the gym a lot that week, then I will factor in my anthropometrics and then look at intensity as like a second note and scale from there. And that kind of helps me direct my selection and orientation for those exercises. Did I just make this a little bit harder? I freaking hope not. I hope that I gave you some pillars to look at when structuring your squat and deadlift. Look, at the end of the day, there's really not gonna be a one size fits all answer here. And that's why it's important to build your systems when it comes to selecting and scaling your movement selection accordingly for your acute workout goals. It doesn't matter how you do it, truthfully. What matters is that you're doing it in a way that makes sense for you personally, and it gets you results based off of positive trends you see. If it works to put deadlift always before your squat, do it and stick to that. Do not just change up because of an arbitrary note out there from somebody who's giving their anecdotal evidence. Look for trends, assess from there, and then scale those trends based on your goals in the moment. Hopefully this video helped you out a little bit. If you have any other questions, drop them in the comments below. Drop this video a like and drop the channel a subscribe. It helps the channel grow. We'll see you in the next one.